Welcome to Oral Health, the full workout. Free to talk about. Tooth decay, plaque and gum disease. We'll then go on to look at oral cancer, oral hygiene, diet and tooth erosion. So, this is what we want, and this is what we don't want. That's nasty, that's nasty, that's nasty. Tooth decay can occur in different parts of the mouth in different people. For example, along the gum line, or at the sides of the teeth, where the teeth contact each other. Here's a view of the same mouth from the left side, and now from the right side. Decay can even occur at the edge of the tooth. Decay can be yellow or black. Oh, oh, oh. We can treat tooth decay once it has happened, but then your mouth will look a bit like this or like this. But here's the good news. This is all completely preventable. Before we look at how to prevent it, you'll need to understand how tooth decay happens. We are looking at a diagram of the inside of a chewing tooth. The visible part of the tooth is called the crown and has three layers. The enamel, the dentine and the pulp. The enamel is hard, whitish in colour and has no nerves or sensation and it forms a protective shell around the softer sensitive yellow dentine. The soft pulp in the centre contains lots of nerves and blood vessels and is very, very sensitive. The dentine and pulp continue down into the roots, which are joined to the jawbone by strong fibres so that normally the teeth are tightly anchored to the jawbone in a healthy mouth. We call this attachment system the periodontal ligament. The first stage of tooth decay is that something happens that makes a hole in the enamel. It happens when we eat sugar. The sugar in our saliva or spit from the food that we eat is used by our mouth bacteria which stick to the plaque on our teeth. These bacteria then produce acid which makes a hole in the enamel and we call this acid attack. A hole or cavity then occurs due to demineralization of the enamel by the acid, which then allows the bacteria to enter the tooth and decay the inside. At this stage, the dentist's probe sticks when it is pressed onto the decaying tooth. It only takes a few months for the decay to reach the dentine. Look at it spreading out, turning the whole inside of the tooth rotten. This whole process only takes about six months, so cavities that look small on the outside are big on the inside. Now once the decay reaches and infects the pulp, an abscess forms underneath the tooth as the pulp and nerve become invaded by the bacteria inside the tooth. Sometimes the whole tooth turns black when the pulp is infected or damaged. So, it only takes about one year to go from demineralization of the outer enamel layer to pulp invasion and possibly a full-blown acute abscess. And this is why you need to visit the dentist at least twice a year for checkups to avoid big fillings or even worse, the dreaded abscess. How do you know if you really got a cavity? What does it feel like? Well, some people feel it before cavitation, which is a hole in the tooth which can be seen or felt. But some people don't feel anything until a hole is clearly visible. When the dentine is decaying, it feels like an on and off pain with hot things, cold things or sometimes sweet things. Look at the little white blob on the gum. This is the beginnings of an abscess, the end stage of tooth decay. 
Abscess pain is a constant and usually severe pain, which is worse with eating, tapping or pressing the tooth due to the pressure buildup in the jawbone. There is usually swelling on the gum and often on the face too, making it difficult to open the mouth or speak and eating is virtually impossible. The best way to appreciate what a full-blown dental abscess causes is to look at real life pictures. See how different this lady looks after the abscess has been drained. Incidentally, don't get confused between an abscess from tooth decay or gum disease and a simple mouth ulcer as seen here. Lots of people get mouth ulcers, nobody knows exactly what causes them and they do eventually go away. So as we said, the two most important factors in tooth decay are the presence of plaque and eating sugary foods and drink. Watch the dye disclosing or showing where the plaque is on these teeth. We all know that plaque is that yucky gooey stuff that builds up on our teeth if we don't brush. But what is it? Well, plaque builds up on all sides of the teeth and especially where the gums and teeth meet each other. It contains sugary proteins from the saliva and forms a matrix or lattice that the bacteria in our mouths stick onto. As time goes on, plaque gets thicker and denser. This happens over a period of 12 hours, which is why it's so important to brush at least twice a day, especially at bedtime, as saliva flow, which produces a natural protective washing action, is much less when we are asleep. Because of this, plaque builds up and a resulting acid attack is most likely to happen at this time, especially if there is sugar on the teeth from an evening sweet snack in a tired victim that hasn't brushed at bedtime. So don't forget to take your toothbrush to that sleepover or late night party. As well as tooth decay, plaque is also the main cause of gum problems too. Gum disease has two stages. The first stage is gingivitis, in other words, bleeding gums. And the second stage is receded gums, where the teeth become loose and eventually fall out. It's very important that you know about this because gum disease can affect young people like you. It can also affect your whole mouth or just one tooth. Gum recession and loss of bone support round the teeth can be slow or rapid. When it occurs in young people, it tends to be rapid. The gum disease process is partly caused by the gums reacting to the bacteria in plaque present on the tooth surface. Here is a close-up of where the gum meets the tooth in a healthy case. Compare this with advancing gum disease. If you have experienced bleeding gums, don't panic because people who have a tendency to get bleeding gums don't necessarily go on to get full-blown gum disease. Normally the gum fits tightly against the tooth surface where the enamel finishes, but in the unhealthy situation the gum becomes red, swollen and inflamed. It pulls away from the surface of the root to create a pocket-like space which collects plaque or hardened plaque, which we call calculus or tartar. Under the gum and in between the teeth, plaque and calcium in the saliva combine to form this tartar or calculus, which is simply hardened calcified plaque. As the pocket gets deeper, the bone socket also recedes so that the tooth starts to loosen and eventually falls out. So let's look at some real life cases of early gum disease or gingivitis. Puffy red sore gums which bleed easily. Now let's look at advanced gum disease. The roots have become exposed as the gums and the bone recede until the teeth become loose and then fall out. This is severe uncontrolled gum disease, sometimes called pyorrhea. Can gum disease be reversed? 
With good oral hygiene and good plaque control, someone with gingivitis can go back to healthy gums. But in the uncontrolled situation, this generally happens. Let's look at the factors that determine whether you are likely to get gum disease. There is a hereditary genetic factor that makes some people more susceptible or prone to it. If your family history shows a prevalence to gum disease, in other words, if your parents or grandparents have gum disease, that is an indicator that you need a really good dental hygiene regime. The second factor is stress, which can cause a deterioration in oral health and will exacerbate conditions like gingivitis. The third gum disease factor is medication, which can cause the mouth to become dry. The fourth factor is medical conditions, like being diabetic or epileptic. Also, people suffering from HIV or glandular fever. The fifth gum disease factor is pregnancy, where a change in hormones induces bleeding or swelling of the gums until after the birth. The sixth factor determining gum disease is diet. A healthy diet will result in less plaque being formed on the teeth. A lack of vitamin C, for example, will lead to a condition called scurvy. Your oral hygiene, the key to a healthy, beautiful mouth. Smoking. People who smoke tend to have a dry mouth which increases plaque buildup. It has also been shown that because smoking inhibits the body's immune system, the habit gradually makes the gum condition worse. Incidentally, not only is smoking one of the main causes of lung cancer and heart disease, but it is also a major factor in oral cancer as well as gum disease. Here's an example of cancer on the tongue. And now, under the tongue. It also commonly occurs on the lip or in the cheek. On the gum ridge or in the roof of the mouth. Now, back to gum disease. What are the signs of gum disease to look out for? Bleeding gums when you brush. This is the most common sign. Bleeding gums at other times, like when eating an apple. Tender, swollen, red, puffy gums. Bad breath, not associated with strong tasting or spicy food. Mobility or drifting of the teeth. In other words, wobbly teeth or the teeth looking like they've moved. So if you experience any of these symptoms, go and see your dentist. Some of the causes of gum disease we can't do anything about, like family history, stress and medical problems. But the most important factors in preventing both tooth decay and gum disease are diet and oral hygiene. Here are the three main factors in a healthy young person that determine whether each of you are going to have healthy gums and teeth or bleeding sore gums and bad teeth. For the very best teeth, eat lots of fresh vegetables, salad and fruit. Apples, oranges, tomatoes, cucumber and celery make good snacks when you get home from school. The more sugary or sticky the food and drinks you put into your mouth and the more times in a day you do this, the thicker and quicker the plaque builds up. So instead of chocolate, biscuits, sweets and toffees, go for low-fat crisps, cottage cheese or a yoghurt snack. Eating sugary foods in the night when your saliva flow is low is pretty dentally lethal. Likewise, eating sugary foods slowly is not recommended as your mouth saliva 
doesn't get a fighting chance to neutralise the acids produced from the sugar. Some very sweet foods and drinks, like candy floss and fudge, are mostly sugar. It's not just the food you eat which affects the health of your teeth, it's also what you drink. All fizzy drinks in your diet can cause tooth erosion, including the sugar-free ones, because the bubbles in fizzy drinks make them acidic, which can dissolve the tooth enamel. This is called tooth erosion. Even fruit juices, especially apple juice, wine and cider, can cause tooth erosion. The other main cause of tooth erosion in young people is anorexia bulimia, an eating disorder where habitual vomiting causes tooth damage due to the acid content. Drinking water, milk or dilutable juice is recommended to avoid tooth erosion completely. Remember, a young healthy mouth also depends on your body's natural level of susceptibility, which in turn depends on your genetic makeup. Your individual genetic makeup determines how good your saliva is at buffering the acid in your mouth. Some people have naturally more efficient saliva than others, which is why even brothers and sisters eating the same diet will still vary in the amount of tooth decay they get. Incidentally, tooth decay has got absolutely nothing to do with the colour of your teeth. White teeth are not stronger than yellow teeth, or vice versa. Developing a good brushing technique for at least two minutes twice a day is the way to fight both tooth decay and gum disease. If you floss too, you will get even better results. The key to good brushing is about getting to all tooth surfaces, not just the bits that show. Lady Dentist says outside, inside, then the biting surfaces, and concentrate along the gum line to remove all the plaque, as the gum line is where it starts to build up first. The main types of toothbrushing devices are manual or electric. Manual brushes are great because they are cheap and simple. I must admit I prefer them, but they do require good brushing technique. The two main types of electric toothbrushes are oscillating rotating and ultrasonic vibrating. They're all there to do the same thing, which is to remove plaque. So find the device that works best for you. But remember, if you brush all the tooth surfaces, especially along the gum line, you will get a good result with any type of brush. Changing your toothbrush or toothbrush head once a month will avoid coal sores, coals and contamination from various microorganisms present in your bathroom. Using a device like the Lady Dentist Dental Duke Box Audio Brush Holder will not only help keep airborne and cross-infection contamination to a minimum, but will also ensure that you brush for the right amount of time. Brush up and down or in a circular motion. If you brush from side to side, it will wear the enamel away and doesn't remove the plaque from the gum line or from in between the teeth. We call this tooth abrasion. This is irreversible so that eventually you may end up with flat sensitive teeth with no enamel. The only way to properly clean in between your teeth is to use floss. This will reach the parts other devices cannot reach. It takes a bit of practice and perseverance but you will get results. Don't push it down too far, remember you are not trying to floss the jawbone round the teeth, just to where the gum attaches to the tooth surface. Don't tug or wrench with the floss once it's between two teeth.
Now, if you really, really hate floss or have orthodontic braces, then you need something else to control the plaque in between your teeth. It has been shown that mouthwashes are effective at stopping plaque buildup and will even remove it nearly as well as floss. The fluoride mouthwashes will also prevent tooth decay. So, an antibacterial fluoride mouthwash is well worth considering to help keep you plaque free and smelling good. Lots of young people have orthodontic treatment with fixed braces. You need to maintain really good oral hygiene when you have braces because the last thing you want is tooth decay between your perfectly straight teeth. Incidentally, straight teeth are much easier to keep plaque free, which means healthy gums. Incidental brushes and mouthwash are essential with braces. These are also helpful to clean food traps and awkward gaps in healthy mouths without braces. And here we see interdental brushes being used to remove plaque between exposed roots and inside gum pockets to control gum disease. There are a few other important dental health aids to mention. Sugar-free chewing gum. Yes, your teacher's nightmare, but really good for your teeth. Why? Because it increases saliva flow as you chew away and therefore reduces acid attack by neutralising the acid. So, if you chew gum after eating something sweet, you will reduce the chance of tooth decay. If you brush after meals as well, that is even better. Another dental health aid is fluoride. Fluoride is present in mouthwash and toothpaste, but what does it do? Usually in the form of sodium fluoride or stannous fluoride, fluoride has the ability to combine with the enamel on your teeth to form a stronger structure, which is resistant to acid attack and therefore tooth decay. Now water is an excellent source of fluoride. As fluoride is naturally occurring in our drinking water in varying amounts depending on where you live. Fluoride tablets or drops can be obtained from chemist shops to increase fluoride levels, but this has to be done carefully as it can cause fluorosis or permanent mottling of the enamel if the dose is too high and the teeth are still forming. Incidentally, don't confuse this with the common staining effects of the antibiotic tetracycline. Although this staining cannot be brushed or polished off, unlike coffee, tea or wine, this can be remedied through professional whitening by your dentist. So, you can't help your natural genetic makeup, but you can help your diet and oral hygiene. Some fortunate people are naturally resistant to tooth decay and some unfortunate people are prone to gum disease. Most of us have a certain level of natural susceptibility to tooth decay or gum disease, or both, and we all have to work around that to maintain a healthy mouth. Visit your dentist at least twice a year and don't be afraid to ask questions when you're there. Tell the dentist if you have noticed anything like bleeding gums, sensitivity or pain. You're not going to get any more replacement teeth, so if you don't look after these now, you won't get another chance. You're stuck with the problem for life. Toothache, long sessions in a dental chair, loads of expense and inconvenience, and most of the time it can be avoided. Because it might be cute to lose a tooth at seven but not at 17. So now I know everything you need to know about teeth.